So easy and so much fun to play with classic French dough. Take, uh, that's two loaves, so take half the batch of dough and roll it into a, see, give it some room here. Roll it into a long snake. Don't handle French dough tenderly, for heaven's sakes. There's no reason to. It can take it. I promise. Well, that's too much dough. I think you need about a third of the whole batch here. There we go. Try and keep your sleeves out of the dough. <laughs> it isn't necessary to put your sleeves in here. Okay, now, see what I've got? I'm going to take a pair of scissors now, and I'm simply going to make a few cuts here. One, and another one down this side, and down this side, and down this side. You better do this on the tray, because you'll never be able to transfer this rascal if you don't. Then you just pull them over on the opposite sides, you see? And you get this kind of leafy twig effect. Isn't that fun? There's supposed to be a cut there somewhere. Where did it go? This dough is so glutinous, you see, that it, uh, it sticks to itself right away. There we go. Let this rise, and you can glaze it or you can flour it. I floured mine. I really prefer the flouring. Now then, my biggie. This is my biggie. Here's my finale. You ready? At least for the French dough. In southern France, they decorate a loaf. And yes, I did make this one. They decorate a loaf, a loaf with, um, with the, the grapes of the church. You see, bread and wine. The church lives on bread and wine. And you do this simply by rolling out little bitty snakes of... Uh, of um, of uh, dough and making your vine and rolling little bitty balls to make the grapes and the leaves are cut by pressing the dough flat on the board and then cutting them out with a razor blade and pressing them on the loaf. Don't flour the loaf until after you're done. Let it rise and you've got a heavenly thing. I was very highly complimented when I was baking like mad. I did all of this late yesterday afternoon and last night before you came, you see. And my friend, who's also my producer, came running in and looked at my loaves sitting on the rack there and he said, oh, those are gorgeous. Where'd you buy them? I was really insulted. <laughs> Also complimented. You can do this. You'll just take some time. One, be sure and let the dough turn to gluten. That's how you're going to get a good crust. And two, don't hustle the process. It's great fun. It'll take some time. You know, it takes a half the day to do this. But at the end of the day, when you come to the table with, with great rolls or big loaves of fancy bread, you know, you can write people's names on the loaf for, for a holiday, you see, for a birthday or something. Or you can uh, do fancy decorations. You can even outline your house on one of these things. Anything for kicks. And bring it to the table, and everyone will be marvelously happy. You'll, ha you'll have a good time, I promise. There it is. We ought to talk about the history of, bre of, uh, of bread in the church. You know that... Uh, um, Bread, biblically, the staff of life and all, uh, is, is terribly important. It's to the point in, uh, in biblical times, we ate so much bread, that bread was a sign of life. Uh, the line, give us this day our daily bread, has nothing to do with just bread, but it was the whole, everything you ate, you see. And bread was, was your, the, the most common thing in your whole diet. Bread it was. And during the 1700s in England, let me show you this article. I have a marvelous book for you. Bread was terribly important in desperate times. That's what we lived on. Here's an article published in England in 1758. Uh, this is a reproduction, of course. It's by Dr. H. Jackson, a chemist, and it's an essay in which he discusses the methods of testing bread to find out whether or not the baker has loaded it with lime, chalk, whiting, or burnt bones. Can you imagine what went on in those times to common bread, which was terribly important to us? Bread is still important to us. And we've forgotten all about it. Because you and I live on, on, on those little puffy, collapsible rolls. You know, you breathe on the thing and it dies off. There's no body to it. This bread has body. You know what the term companion means? It's Latin for the word com, with, bread, pana. It means the person with whom I break my bread. That's a companion. And that's what you and I should be cooking. Now, let me show you a more flamboyant loaf. And this one uh, is from Italy, and it's called focaccio bread. It's just gorgeous. Uh, oh, I know where it is. Let me get started with a clean bowl here. Oh, this is going to be murder to clean off my paddle. Maybe I'm not going to start with a clean bowl. <laughs> oh, well. In go the hands, gang. Let's, let's face it. No other way to do this. For this loaf, I want you to prepare a one cup of water. And we're going to use three cups of flour. And it's not so important to... Uh, uh, to um, weigh this one out because we're not worrying about a crust. This is kind of a, it's almost a pizza bread. I think I'm stuck to this. Remember the old Laurel and Hardy routine? They couldn't get rid of something. They kept going back and forth with it. I think that's what we're going to have here. All right. I have some extra bowls for my, uh, for my uh, mixer. It, it works very well. Now, we're going to add to our bowl one cup of water. 
And then we want one package of yeast. Nothing to it. One package of yeast is about that much. All righty, we'll let that soak for about five minutes and then blend into it three cups of, of, um, of flour. And let me show you the other liquids we want to put in this. Uh, in addition to this, we want to add one fourth of a cup. It's very rich stuff of olive oil. So pour it right into the flour before we get started here. One fourth of a cup of olive oil. Focaccia is very rich. Then we want a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt. One and one. You get the idea that we're making something rich, huh? There's the sugar. I always keep a little sugar in the counter in a, in a, in a small bottle like this, you see, so that I can uh, measure in a hurry in my hands. There it goes. All right. Now then, let's add the flour. We need three cups. You can do this with a regular mix master for the first cup or so to blend in the oil and the goodies, you see. Otherwise, you're going to have trouble. Have you got the recipe now? Three cups of flour, blend it into one cup of water and two cakes of yeast, a fourth of a cup of olive oil, a teaspoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. Now, you see, this is really going to take a lot of work. You see what's happening? See how tough it is already? And I've got a whole cup of flour to go. Well, I'll show you what you get because I want, I want you to see the whole process here. It's just a delicious dish. See if I can find it. Which, do, which bowl is it under? Aha, I have him. Focaccio. 